Hi everybody, today we're talking about endometriosis pain and triggers that actually cause the endometriosis pain. Have you ever been in a grocery store and you've had to pull your cart over and try to blend in because you're in god awful pain, you're holding your stomach, you're probably sweating because you're having an acute flare up of endometriosis. That is the worst thing ever. I'm in my 50s now and I can tell you, I still remember this horrible, painful endometriosis, debilitating pain in episode that I had when I was in my teens. And I remember being at an amusement park and doubling over, walking with my boyfriend, being so embarrassed because I think I was like 16 or 17, middle of the day, trying to have fun. It was like day after promers, I think something like that, like a school dance or something. Anyway, pulling over and just being like, I gotta get to the bathroom, just like hot, nauseous, all the other things that are just feel gross and horrible. And meanwhile, you want to be sitting there or standing there, walking around, having a good time, and it's debilitating. So if you have endometriosis pain, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And you cannot always guess when it's going to knock you out, like in public, at home, doing something fun. And then it's just it's like a snowball effect when it starts to hit, because then emotionally you get pulled in immediately. And there's like frustration, there's anger, there's grief. Maybe you're crying. It's just everything. It opens up a big can of worms to figure out what is going on and what the triggers are, it does take a little bit of detective work. Now, looking back on my teenage self, I can tell you probably what was going on that day. For sure, I remember that I was using tampons and those are some of the, one of the big triggers that I had and I eventually stopped doing. It was very hot outside. I was most likely dehydrated because as a teenager, I don't remember walking around with bottles of water or worrying about it. And if you were thirsty, if I was thirsty, I was grabbing a soda. I wasn't grabbing purified water. So it's easy for me to look back and go, okay, I was dehydrated. I had tampons. I am so sure I had fast food for lunch, right? Like a greasy burger, greasy fries, and like I said, a cold soda. And that was typical when I was a teenager. So hi, everybody. Welcome back, or if it's your first time, thank you for stopping by. I'm Dr. Gina Terranoni, and I run Holistic Health Journeys for Women. I've helped over 2,000 women and couples get pregnant in the last 22 plus years. I've also supported thousands of women through pregnancies, postpartum, perimenopause, menopause, and I use a lot of holistic, natural medicine, and functional medicine, and I focus on quick action steps based on research, decades of training, and of course, all my clinical experience with patients. So let's get back to the most common triggers of what flares up endometriosis. And these are in no particular order. Some of them may stand out for you and there are more than this, but I just wanna get you started so you can start paying attention to your day to day. Keep in mind, I'm talking to you as a traditional Chinese medicine doctor and where we have very specific diagnostic tools that let us know which type of endometriosis pain patients are experiencing, I can tell you that every case of endometriosis would be considered blood stasis. And I want to tell you what this is really quick and then what aggravates it and what you can do to make yourself feel better. Okay, let's get started. So blood stasis, think of it's easier for me to describe it this way. If you think of a flowing river and then there's that like beautiful, healthy water, this is your blood in your body. Now, look at the sides of the river and you're looking at the perimeters of the waters flowing. Things are getting caught up in there like debris, leaves, trash, unfortunately, some moss, some algae. It just looks murky on the edges. And then some rivers that you'll see have like more and more murky water coming in. And that also can show you that the flow of that river gets slower. So the more of the flow, the less the debris and the clogged water. This is the same for your blood. And you need to have proper flow of blood in order to avoid a buildup of blood clots. And these clots are what are causing the pain and they're causing dysfunction in your overall health. So let's look at the five triggers. And first we'll start with diet. So here are a few things that I want you to think about. 
Alcohol will exasperate and aggravate pain. Smoking will aggravate and exasperate pain. Eating damp and greasy foods like fast food, foods with preservatives, excess of dairy foods can create issues and cause endometriosis pain as well. And next, let's talk about stress, specifically anger. When anger gets pent up in the body and you're not working on stress reduction regularly and working in self-care, it gets pent up and it wants to boil over. So when this happens, it creates the liver in Chinese medicine, that is. It creates the liver to stagnate and create more issues with other organs as well. And one of them is the spleen. And so when the liver gets like, err, and gets angry and starts attacking and the spleen's like backing off, the spleen function in your body gets weaker. And in Chinese medicine, we can see that when you start to have bloating or cramping or diarrhea, loose stool, and sometimes that will alternate with constipation. So that's what's happening. There's a lot more details, but I don't wanna lose you in the details. And next up, another trigger for endometriosis pain can be due to lack of exercise. So exercise really improves blood flow and also it eases tension in the body. So there's different levels of when you should be exercising, when you should be resting, when you don't really wanna push through things like some people do. And we can talk about that a little bit later. One of the other triggers is poor sleep. All of our organs replenish and rejuvenate while we're sleeping. And if we have irregular patterns of sleep, or maybe you have interrupted sleep, not enough sleep, you know, it's like you go to sleep, you wake up, or you go to sleep at different times, you wake up at different times every day. The blood in your body will start to get deficient, and that can cause blood stasis and lack of blood circulation in the body. All of this can lead to triggering endo pain. And lastly, I'd mentioned this because I know this is one of the challenges that I had was using tampons. Tampon use is super common among women, but I think more and more now people are more open to trying to not use tampons. They do create tension and cramping in the body. And if you think about it, they literally dam up the blood and they force it to stay put when really what it wants to do is get out of the body. So also, except for organically made tampons, most tampons use cotton that has been sprayed with pesticide. And even some of the organic tampons still use strings that are not organic and they carry toxins. And I know it's these little details, but they all add up. And then they tend to be wrapped in plastic, which also causes hormone disruption and hormone dysregulation. So I wanna to talk to you about a patient case study. Aside from that example that I used myself, I had one of my patients came in so much pain, laid in bed a lot. She wasn't necessarily sleeping, so sleep was definitely irregular. She was in a vicious cycle of healing crisis, desperate to get control of her health. And when she came in to see me, she's, I will do anything. And this is what we worked on to make sure she was getting better sleep so she could experience much less pain and endometriosis pain flare ups. I had her journal. I wanted to see when are these flare-ups occurring? What kind of food is she eating? What time of day is she eating? What's her stress level like throughout the day? Is it like one specific thing? Can she not figure out what the stress is? She just feels tension in her body because sometimes that can help happen to us. What are her sleep times? And what are the sleep times that she's in bed, that she's actually asleep? And when is she actually laying in bed but not sleeping? And maybe that's due to the endometriosis pain. Another big question, and it's good for you to think about, is what is the best time of day for you? When do you feel your best? And does this change? Or is it every day at one in the afternoon, I feel amazing, or I feel terrible in the morning, but I feel better. Usually people start to feel worse in the evening, but it just depends on the person. So every morning, I had her start with a cup of steeped freshly grated ginger and turmeric tea. And there's so many benefits to that, but that there's so much covered in all the episodes. Definitely go back because this is the fifth video in the series of endometriosis. So please go back and see all the details there. I also had her work in five minutes of deep breathing exercises every day. And this can be done 
not just acutely, but preventatively. And if you are not in acute pain, I would say it's easier to do five or 10 minutes and add more, or you can do break it up and do five minutes in the morning, five minutes in the evening. But she was asked to do at least five minutes daily and she stuck to it. And then we looked at healthy meals based on whole foods. So no fried food, no like deep fried or fast food and focus on lightly steamed vegetables and adding in spinach and kale two soft-boiled eggs with whole grain toast and avocado was something that she really liked to eat for breakfast. And then also I had her put a 40 ounce water bottle, like I have, on her work desk and aim to drink this by lunchtime. And also walk 30 minutes a day and her best time and energy level was at lunchtime. So I definitely wanted her to be walking when she felt good. I didn't want her to have to push through anything as she was having cramps or discomfort. And one of the things that we did was I asked her to try not to lay down unless the pain was above like a three or four out of 10. Otherwise, walk when you walk gently or just walking in general, that gets the blood invigorated and circulating properly. So another thing was the goal was to go to bed by 9.30 or 10 every single night. And this is a big one, no TV, no phone, no blue light, one to two hours before bedtime. And then again, adding in deep breathing, like five minutes or so at night. Nothing is perfect. And this definitely takes time, but this patient started to have a lot more joy in her life, a lot more comfort in just one to two weeks. And she was aiming for doing most of these self-care practices. And so just a reminder that the quick solution to consider working on for you, these are just a few, diet, stress, exercise, sleep, ease of blood flow. And so that would be even more exercise or different herbs that you can add in. And there's so much to do and there's so much that we can add in, but it's easier to start when you don't have this giant laundry list of things that can help. So start simply, add on later, follow me for more tips here, and I'll see you in the next video.